This is the Kandakal Vinaya uh, content from the first, sorry, second year, second semester is the first test of Kandakal Vinaya. It covers these topics of bathing, plain water, wearing jewelry, uh, head hair, beard, body hair, uh, shaving and so on, mirrors and ointments, dancing, singing, playing music, preaching Dhamma, ear and teeth cleaning and nails. So we'll begin with bathing. Frequency of bathing. So there is this Pachitya uh, Sikapada in the Bhikkhu Pati Mokanu. Yopana Bhikkhu Orena Adama Sangnahaye Anyatrasmaya Pachitya Antathayan Samayo Diyadho Maso Seso Gimhana Divasana Sapatamu Maso Icceti Adhati Yamasa Unha Samayo Prilaha Samayo Gilana Samayo, Kamma Samayo, Adhana Gamana Samayo, Vata Vutti Samayo, Yantatta Samayo. So this rule, uh, basically that uh, should not uh, bathe uh, more frequently than once every half a month, uh, unless under these certain conditions, and then these conditions are given, we'll discuss them here. So this is applicable only in the middle region, Majjadisa. There is an allowance for uh, other regions, Pachanti Mesu Janapadisu. Uh, in these regions, you, you have an allowance for Duvanahanam. Uh, it's like an allowance to bathe at any time. So it's a constant bathing. Anujana Midvikavi Pachanti Mesu Janapadisu Duvanahanam. So these exceptions, these samayas, um, we could put unha and parilaha under the same, under one, but um, uh, unha samaya, uh, the definition of unha samaya is the diadho maso siso gimhana. So that um, is the first, the last one and a half months of the hot season. So this is, this period is called unha samaya. So in this period, there is an exception to this rule. The other period is the following month, which is the first month of the rainy season. It's called Parilaha Samaya. Parilaha Samayo Nama Vasana Sapatamo Maso. Then the next exception is Gilana Samayo. Gilana here means Yasavina uh, Nhanina Napasuhoti is whenever one is not comfortable without bathing. Napashoti. Kamma Samayo is the next exception. This is um, includes even uh, after one has worked, even just having swept the monastery grounds, the Parivena. So Kamma Samayo Nama Antamaso Parivenampi Sammatanghoti. Adhanagamana Samayo, the next exception, is uh, when one is on a journey, so before a journey, during a journey, or after a journey. The journey has to be at least of a half a yojana. So some opinions on how much that is, but maybe something around 10 kilometers. So, so the Pali goes, Adhana Gamana Samayo Nama, Adha Yojanam Gatchisamiti Hai Tabbang. Gatchantenan Hai Tabbang, Gatenan Hai Tabbang. And the last one, Vata Vutti Samayo, is when there is a wind or rain, is when one's body is dirty, for example, is covered with a dusty wind, or, for example, two or three raindrops fall on the body. So the Pali goes, Vata Vutti Samayo Nama, Bhikkhu Sarajena Vatena Okinna Hanti, Dvevati Nivauda Kapusita Nikaye Patita Nihanti. So here's some words related to this section. Uddaka pusita is a drop of water. Pusita is a drop, also has other meanings. Parivena is like maybe could be a room or cell or monastery grounds or the space around the building. Parivena. Okina is a covered, no? sprinkled or sprinkled down. So rubbing the body. So this was frequency of bathing. Now rubbing the body while bathing. So there are some prohibited means, eight prohibited means of rubbing the body while bathing. So 
The Pali is Nabhikave, Nahayama Nena Bhikkuna, Rukhe, Kayo Ghansitabu. No, Rukhe. So while bathing, one should not uh, rub the body on a tree. Rukhe, Kayo Ghansitabu. And this is a Dukkha, no? Yo Ghanseya Apati Dukkatasa. So the same applies for Thambha. So Thambhe Kayo Ghansitabu, which is a post. Kutte Kayo Ghansitabu also. No, wall. Next section also adds attani. This one is nahai tabang. Nabhikave attani nahai tabang, which is attana is like a a place with that has this like a wooden post which is in size, like indented with like protuberances, so you could rub your body against. Handabahatakena, using a hand like instrument, maybe a like a monk hand. Monk, monkey, monkey hand, like I said. Kuruvinda kasutiya, nahai tabang, a string of beads used for rubbing the body. And malakina, with a scrubber. Like a, a, a scrubber which has like, uh, like teeth. So using these are also dukkha. Another thing which is a dukkata is uh, vigaiha parikama. So nabhikave vigaiha parikama kara petabang. Rubbing against each other's bodies, for example. Vigaiha parikama kara petabang. So these are the dukkatas related to rubbing the body. And then there are some allowed means, three allowed means of rubbing the body. Anujana mibhikave gilanasa akatamalakam. So for a sick person, uh, malaka, just like the previous malaka, but the previous malaka is like with, uh, with teeth, it is made, katamalaka. This is akatamalaka, is an unworked, maybe without teeth or any indentations. So this is allowed for the sick. And anujana bibikave ukasikan, a strip of cloth is also allowed. And putupanikam, your own hands, this is allowed. These are allowed means for rubbing the body. So some vocabulary is atana, which is that post incised with like squares or indentations, used as a rubber for bathing people, by bathing people. Kuta is a wall. Gandhabhataka is an instrument used to rub the body while bathing. It says it's like a monkey hand, maybe in the shape of a hand or something like that. Kuruvinda Kasuti is a string of beads made by grinding vermilion powder and stones with dyes, luck dye, dyes made of luck. And they use this type of beads, this string, to rub the body as well. Suti, I think it's not related actually to this word, Kuruvinda Kasuti. Suti. It's just a dictionary word. It's a pearl oyster, but it seems not to be related to Kuruvinda Kasuti. It's not clear. Ukasika is a pad of cloth, no? Ukasika. Anujana mi bikave ukasikan. This is a feminine word. It's a pad of like cloth. So you can rub the body with cloth. Malaka or katamalaka is the scrubber or the scraper. Uh, and it, it's like made. So to say, it has like teeth, in the shape of a swordfish teeth. So it has like indentations. So this one is not allowed. So this was about bathing. Now playing in water. Udakeha sadhamme pachitya. This pachitya, no? Playing in water is a pachitya offense. Then there are some anapati factors. Anapati factors. We have one, two, three, four, five, six anapati factors. First is nahasadipayo. If you are not intending to play, it's allowed to uh, bathe. Satikaraniye udakang otaritva nimujjativa ummujjativa palavativa. So when there is something that must be done, there is a reason. For example, bathing is a reason. Uh, so entering the water, sinking, emerging, floating, all of, all of these things are allowable. And parangachanto nimujjativa, ummujjativa, palavativa. Parangachanto is 
when one is going to the next, uh, how to say, to cross the, the, a river, for example, while crossing a river, going to the other shore of a river, for example, Parangachan. Next one, anapati is apadasu, in case of disasters, for example, even attacks from animals, for example. Umatakasa and adikamikasa also are anapati factors. So this is playing in water. Wearing jewelry, um, so the Chabagya monks were wearing these types of jewelries and then they were uh, one by one prohibited. But uh, in general, any kind of ornament is included. So the, the rules themselves were Nabhikave Vallika Dhare Tabba, which is Vallika is like an earring. Na pamango dhare tabo, type of waistband. Na kantasuttakan dhare tabang, necklace, kantasuttakan. Na katisuttakan dhare tabang, it's a type of waistband, it seems. Na ovatikan, is like bracelets, bangles, dhare tabang. Na kayurang dhare tabang, armlets, arm guards. It's like a bracelet, but it's worn on the arm, upper upper in the upper part of the arm no? um nahatha baranang dhare tabang ornaments worn on the hands na anguli mudika dhare tabba are finger rings rings yo dhareya apati dukkatas so this includes any type of ornament so here the vocabulary related to this the valika are earrings pamanga waistbands kantasuttaka like necklace uh, katisuttaka is like a waistband, ovatika, bracelets, kayura, armlets or arm guards, maybe also anklets, hatabaranas are ornaments worn on the hands, and angulimudika are rings. Now, with regard to head hair, beard and body hair. So, instruments allowed for shaving are uh, kura, which is a razor, kurasila, whetstone, kurasipatika, a razor case, namataka, a felt, to wrap the razor, and sabang kurabandang, any barber's equipment, everything that is included. So, anujana mibikkave, kurang, kurasilang, kurasipatikan, namatakan, sabang kurabandang. The limit of time or length for hair. The rule, related rule is Anujana mi bhikkave dumasikam ba dubangulam ba. So two months are allowed of time to pass between shavings or dubangulam, two fingers. So these are the two limits, either two months or two fingers. Finger width, no? Finger width. So, nabhikave digha ke sadhare tabba, yodhare apati dukkatasa. So, this is also connected, no? So, long hair should not be, uh, we should not have a long hair, should not be allowed to grow more than two fingers or two months. Are scissors allowed for cutting hair? And the rule, related rule is nabhikave katarikaya, which is scissors, no? Ke sa cheda petabba. Yo cheda peya apati dukkatasa. So we should not cut the hair with scissors. This is said specifically of hair, kesa. Then there is an allowance for using scissors due to sickness. Anujana bhikkavi abadha pachaya, abadha pachaya katarikaya kese cheda petum. Janaka Vivansa Seado also uh, includes that, for example, if, you're, if you have a fever or things like that. Not only wounds, for example, but if you have a fever, for example. Body hair is not mentioned. This is said specifically for kisa, scissors. Now, some prohibitions with regard to combing or smoothening the hair. Nabhikave kochena. Kesa osante tabba. Kochena is a comb, a brush. So it should not be used. No? Especially for with intending to like 
beautify, maybe the hair. So kochena is the first one. Panakena, the next one, which is, uh, we'll see the meaning down there. Panakena is a bit like an instrument. Could be any instrument made of uh, danta and so on. Hatta panakena is using the bare hands and fingers to, for example, fix the hair. Udakatela kena is water and oil. So all of these five are uh, disallowed. Nabikave, no? So nabikave, kochena, panakena, hatta panakena, sittate lakena, udakate lakena, ke sao sante taba. Yo santea pati dukatas. What is allowed is with the intention of cleaning, for example, not for beautification. You can wipe the hair with water or a wet hand, for example. So these things with this intention would not be any offense. So plucking hairs, removing gray hairs, this is not allowed. The rule is nabikave palitam gahape tabang. Yo gahapeya patidukatas. Palita is the gray white hair. No? Prohibitions and allowances with regard to facial and body hair. So this was mainly about hair. Now facial and body hair. So beard, mustache and body hair in general. So the prohibitions. Nabikave masu, which is bearded. And datika. So nabikave masu kapabetabang. Uh, the beard should not be neatly trimmed or dressed. Also, it should not be let grow, should not be grown. And here it's not mentioned how long, but it is agreed uh, mostly by the teachers that it should also be like the hair, so two fingers. And this verb, that is used for masu, uh, it doesn't mean that you cannot cut the or shave the beard. Uh, this kapapetabang is a verb used when, the, for example, uh, barbers cut the hair and the beard in order to beautify the face. So this is this verb is used as kapapetabang. So this should not be done. Kapapetabang. Hmm? Should not be neatly trimmed. Um, it doesn't mean you should not cut it. Golomikan kara petabang. Nabikave golomikan kara petabang. So, the, like a goat's beard. So, like a, maybe a style of beard should not be allowed, should not be made. Chaturasakan, also like a rectangular shaped beard. So, you should not shave the beard in a rectangular shape or basically, I think, in any shape in order to beautify the beard. And with regard to mustache, datika, it should not be kept. So you, you cannot shave the beard and leave the mustache or the other way around. Body hair. So we have a few areas here which are mentioned directly. Naparimukhan karapetabang. So the, the hair of the chest, parimukha, should not be cut, should not be made. Na adhadukan karapetaban, the hair of the belly, all the area of the belly, adhaduka. And sambadhi lomang sangharapetaban. Sangharapetaban is the verb used with regard to removing the hair in the genital area or armpits. So this, these areas are called sambadha, genitals and armpits. So this also should not be sanghara uh, pitabang, should not be removed. And the bighang nasika lo mandhari tabang, the nasal hair should also not be allowed to grow too long. The length is not given, but it should not be too long. Now there are some allowances, two are mentioned here. The note sandasa is allowed. Sanda anujana mibikave sandasa. These are like pincers or tongs for removing the nasal hair. And uh, if the hair around the face, things like forehead, 
I don't really know what he meant by forehead, but eyebrows, upper beard. So removing certain hair that is very unpleasant to see or frightens others, for example. So then it is allowed to remove them. But, for example, the practice of removing the eyebrows without such a reason, this should not be done. So in some, some, in some traditions, this is done. For example, I think in the Thailand tradition mainly, maybe some others as well, I think in Laos. So this should not be done without any reason. Um, do hair and beard, beard have to be shaved together? So there is this passage in the Vinaya Vinicha that says Kappa peya visumma sundati kangva tapeya yo Sanghara peya valo mansambadhe tassadukkata So based on this gata, some say that one should not shave only the beard Kappa peya visumma sundati kangva tapeya yo but uh, according to Chanavimala Mahatera, his opinion is that uh, this means that you should not shave the beard and leave the mustache. So, but shaving the hair and, and the beard uh, together is not, not mentioned. I think traditionally these are shaved in the same session, we could say, in the same session, but not necessarily together. Uh, of course, not at the same time, that's obvious. So there would be no offense for shaving the beard and not shaving the hair. Um, so some vocabulary related to this section. Kura is a razor, is a neuter noun. Kura silang, also neuter. Whetstone. Kura sipatika is a, the case for the razor, a razor case. Namataka is the felt to wrap the razor. Kurabanda is the barber's equipment. Katarika is the scissors, or yeah, I think scissors here. Palita is the gray hair. Golomika is a goat hair, is like a style of beard. Datika is the mustache, sometimes I think used for animals, maybe whiskers. Oharapeti, this verb is used for cutting the hair and beard. For example, in the expression Ke samasun ohara petwa. For example, before ordination, right? Sanghara piti. This verb is used for shaving, cutting, or removal of the pubic or armpit hair. So the hair uh, on the armpits or the genital area, pubic hair. Kappa piti. This other verb is used for the trimming or dressing of the facial hair. This is mainly for, for the looks of it, according to Uddana commentary. Sandasa is the tongs or pincers. Sandasa. Parimukkhan, uh, in this case here in this section, it means on the chest. It's the chest hair. Parimukkhan. Kocha is the comb. Comb for, for, for brushing the hair, for combing the hair. Hanaka is like an instrument for combing the hair. Also, it could be made of several, several materials. The, so the example in the Pali is dantamaya disu yena kienati. Whatever is made of like dantamaya and so on. So Bhante, I think, adds, added that it's shaped like, uh, like a snake hood. Not very clear about this, but I think it's the shape of a, like a comb. Hatapanaka, this is uh, when you use the fingers themselves to, for example, to comb the hair, to fix the hair uh, with bare hands. No? Hatapanaka. Uh, Sitatelaka is like a mix of oil or wax, beeswax. Nowadays we could also include gels and creams and things like this. Udakatelaka is water and oil, like an oily water for the hair. Niyasa is one word for gum, resin. Niyasa. And sitaka is beeswax. Beeswax in the compound sitatelaka. 
So this was the section on head hair, beard, and body hair. Now about mirrors and ointments. So with regard to mirrors, not only mirrors, but any reflective surfaces. So the prohibition, there is one, which is Nabhikkave Ada Seva Udakapateva Mukanimitan Oloke Tabbam Yoloke Apatidukkatas. So whoever, uh, sorry, Nabhikkave, so a mirror or a, even a bowl of water, for example, Udakapata. So looking at the reflection of the face, Mukanimitta, um, is not allowed. So whoever does so is has an offense of a dukkata. So mirror or bowl of water, we include any reflective surface. So even maybe a glass, of course, a mirror. Allowances. Uh, Bhante also believes that, for example, if you use the, for example, the phone or or a camera to show your own image, should also be included. Apatidukatas. Um, now some allowances here is abadapatya dasiva udakapateva mukhanimitang loketo. So, due to some sickness, we are allowed to use the mirror or look at the reflection. And um, to see the signs of aging for the purpose of Kamatana, this is also allowed. And uh, while shaving, there is not directly given, not directly said, but um, there is a suggestion by Chandavimala Mahatera that it could be allowed to use the mirror to shave, to prevent injury. But this is maybe not directly mentioned, it's debatable. It's not mentioned, commentary or sub-commentary. Um, so the Buddha does, um, the Buddha did encourage shaving each other. So another monk shaving uh, you uh, was encouraged by the Buddha. Because it is a little dangerous, no? Shaving, especially if you're using like certain knives and so on. Depending on the, the tool used, could be quite dangerous. So it was encouraged to shave one another, but it's not necessary. So I think uh, we agree that it, it is better if, if one gets used to shaving without the use of mirror, without the need for for the mirror. Prohibitions and allowances about skin applications, for example, ointments, makeup, even tattoos. Prohibitions. I have four over here. Nabhikave mukhang aling pitabang. Sorry, it's more than four actually. Nabhikave mukhang aling pitabang to anoint the face is not allowed. Ummaditabang. To massage the face. Chunnetabang. To apply powder, for example. We could add makeups and so on. Manosilakaya mukhang lang chetabang. To mark the face with this like red arsenic. Maybe, for example, between the, the, the eyebrows like they do in India. For example, to make marks. So, you could add any tattoos. Mukhanglang chetaba. Na angarago katabo. You should not paint the body. Na mukarago, also the face, and angaraga mukaraga, both. So whoever does so is a napati of dukkata. So altogether here we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven prohibitions. And one allowance, which is anujana mi bhikkavi abadha pachaya mukhangalim pitum. So, due to some sickness, um, we can anoint, anoint maybe with some oil, medicine, the face. Umaditabang, if I remember correctly, massaging would also be okay for health. If it's necessary due to some sickness, it is also allowed. Some vocabulary related to this section. Adasa. 
This is a mirror. Alimpati. This verb is to apply or to smear or rub. From the root lip. Lancheti is to mark or stamp or seal. Manosilakaya is red arsenic. They use to, to mark the face. Angaraga and mukaraga is like a, maybe a cosmetic, cosmetics to anoint the body or face. So maybe creams, lotions, maybe it's etc. So this is the section on mirrors and ointments. Now dancing, singing and playing music. So here are some, some situations, whether it is an offense or not, for example. Watching even a peacock dance or listening to sadhu music. Sadhu music is like music done about Dhamma, for example. The Buddha's words made into music. It's called sadhu music. So this, these are dukkata offense, watching or listening. No? Watching or listening in a nunnery. This would be anapati, if you're in a nunnery. Dancing, singing, or playing music oneself, doing these things is a dukkata, and having others do is also a dukkata. So here the question, for example, of nowadays when you press a button to play a, mu a song, for example, this is under uh, playing oneself. You, you press that button intending to play a music. So, so even though it's not an instrument, for example, a piano or a guitar, but even just pressing a button, for example, to, to make that music, then uh, it would be this dukkata. So what purposely playing music, playing videos, for example, on the phone or a computer that includes sang that dancing, singing or playing music, then would be under this, covered under this. Watching, listening, when it happens in front of oneself, just in front, it happens in front of you, regardless of wherever you are, this is an, no offense if you make no effort to see or to listen to this. Then when devotees come, for example, and ask permission to dance or sing or play music, even if it's as a puja for a chetia, for example, they want to honor the Buddha by singing and playing music, this is kusala kama, it is good, it is merit, but the monk, if they ask in this way, using these words to dance, to sing, to play music, then the monk cannot give this permission, should not allow. Should not allow means you should not say yes. If they do it by themselves, then it would not be an offense for the monk. If they do ask, even though their intention is to dance, sing or play music, but they just ask permission as to make a puja. We just want to make a puja, we just want to honor the Buddha or, and so on, the chetya, then it is no offense to allow such request. So here, um, commentary, the Atakata, gives some more situations. So the, the main rule I think here is Nabhikave, Natchangva, Gitangva, Vaditangva, Dasanaya Gantabang, Yoga Cheya Apati Dukkatas. So uh, one should not dance, sing, or play music. Should not go to see these things. This is the rule. And whoever does so has a dukkata offense. Then commentary adds, for example. In the monastery, antararame, titassa, so when one remains, one stays in the monastery, passato anapati, so if you see that, if you watch that, it would not be an offense. So within the monastery, and here arama is the monastery itself, okay? Antararame, so by remaining in the monastery, it would not be an offense. Then, Pasisamiti Viharato Viharangachantasa. So, for one who goes from one monastery to the next, intending to see, intending to watch, intending to listen, then this is an offense. Apatiyeva. Asanasalaya nisinopasati. 
So if you are sitting on the asana sala, the sitting hall, and it, you're sitting there and it happens and you watch it, then it's not an offense. Pasisamiti uttahitwa gachanto. So if intending to watch or, or listen, you get up and you go wherever it is happening. For example, you, you make that those efforts, then this would be an offense. In the viti, in the road, for example, in the village, um, vitiyang, vitiyang tattva, givang parivatitva pasatopi. This, um, if you are in the road, for example, and this happens, uh, someone is dancing or singing and so on, uh, and even just turning the neck to watch, it would be an offense. So these are some conditions. Then in the Bhikkhuni Pachitya, we get some more information about related to this rule. So in the Anapati section, in the Lasunavaga of the Bhikkhuni Pachitya, we have a few factors uh, which are not offense. So it, it clarifies a bit more how to practice this rule. So the first one is Aramethita Passativa Sunativa. So in the monastery, Arame. So if you remain in the monastery, just like it was said over here, no? Sabbangantara Arametitas. Bikuniya Tito Ka Sangva, Nisinno Ka Sangva, Nipanno Ka Sangva, Agantva, Nakchantiva, Gayantiva, Vadintiva. So if people, others, come to the place where the Bikuni is staying, her sitting place, her dwelling place, or uh, her, her sleeping place, etc. If they come and they do these things, they dance, they sing, they play music, then it's not an offense for this Bikuni. They just came and did it by themselves. Patipatanga chanti passativa sunativa. So while one is traveling, while one is traveling, you happen to see this or hear this, it is not an offense. Satikaraniye, when there is something to be done, gantwa passativa sunativa. You're going, you're going somewhere because you have to do something, then if you happen to see this or hear this, it is not an offense. Apadasu, in case of disasters, if you end up seeing or watching or hearing, there is no offense. Ummatikaya and adikamikaya, for a person who is mentally unstable or, uh, or the first offender also, it is not an offense. The first offender, adikamika. So these are some anapati factors. Related to this. Now, vocabulary, we have Vadita, which is instrumental music. Vadita. And Patipata is a, a way back. When you're on the road back, for example. Patipata. Titokasa, which appears here. Titokasan, Nisinokasan, Nipannokasan. Titokasan is the place where you stay, the place where you remain. So these are some words related to dancing, singing, playing, and music. Preaching the Dhamma. Prohibitions. Nabhikave ayatake na gita sare na dhammo gaitabbo. Yoga ye apati dukkatasa. So it is not allowed to sing the Dhamma with a very like drawn out singing voice. Ayatakena is like stretched, stretched out. So for example, taking a sound, a vowel and stretching its sound for too long, it is not allowed. Uh, so the purpose of this, because it leads to the distortion, some of the purposes, no? It leads to the distortion or breaking and loss of words and meanings. So words get broken, get, get distorted, and the meaning as well gets uh, 
broken, gets distorted, gets lost. Then there is also another passage which adds five disadvantages to singing the Dhamma with this long stretched out voice. Five, um, five disadvantages. Atanapitasminsari sarajati. So oneself, the one who is doing it, becomes attached to the voice, to the sound. Paripitasminsari sarajandi. Others as well become attached to this sound, to this voice. Gahapatikapi ujjayanti. Householders, lay people, express their displeasure, they criticize. Sarakutimpi nikayamana sasama disabhangohu di. The concentration of the person who is craving for this making of melody, sarakutti, is also broken, is disrupted. Pachima janata ditta nugatin apajati. Future generations, pachima janata, they fall or they follow. They start emulating this same behavior, this what they have seen, you know, what they have seen, for example, their teachers and preceptors reciting in such a way, they end up following this manner. So these are the five disadvantages. So how much can the letters or the vowels, the sounds be lengthened? Normally, I think um, it is said that two matas. This is in the Pali grammar. It appears to matas is like the time it takes, for example, to snap a fingers is one mata. So two mata is yeah, it's quite a brief time. Is the time it takes to to pronounce a long vowel. So uh, I think another, according to my memory, another example was the blink of an eye is one mata. Which is quite brief, no? So, basically, the Dhamma should be recited on a normal speed, like the speed we normally sp we normally speak, maybe a little slower, but not too slow. Gantipada, however, says that it could be lengthened lengthened up to six mata, so maybe three times longer. So a little bit longer. It is allowed according to this Gantipada. Now, another thing that is not allowed in the Kudakapata, Atakata, is Dhammo Pasanghita Gita. So the passage says, Dhammo Pasanghitam Picheta Gita Navatati. This is Dhammo Pasanghita Gita is song, is a song, Gita. Um, no examples are given, but what is generally accepted is that it means songs, gitas, made about dhamma, with dhamma words, um, and they are, they are made as songs. They are played with instruments, drawn out voices, maybe choirs, and they are done in a song-like manner, for example, following a rhythm and so on. And it leads to those five disadvantages. So the five disadvantages can, can help us identify when, when the line is being crossed. So this is Dhamma Upasanghita Gita. A song which is kind of connected to Dhamma. Dhamma Upasanghita. So this is Navatati, is not allowed. So... Now we come to the allowances with regard to preaching Dhamma. So, Anujanami Bhikkave Sarabhanyam. So, the Buddha allows Sarabhanya. The thing is that Sarabhanya is not explained. So, Sarabhanya, there were, it is mentioned that there were 32 Sarabhanyas in the past. Sarabhanyas are like maybe a melodious, nowadays we understand it as a, a melodious manner without leading to those disadvantages. We'll discuss more now soon. So there were 32 Sarabhanyas, examples of their names. They were, they were called Vata, I think. Taranga Vata, Taranga Bheda Vata, Galita Vata. These are some examples. But they are not explained. Sarata Dipanitika adds that 
at that time when when they were writing that commentary no one knew no one were no one knew how these vatas uh, were done so they were maybe styles of recitation which were included under sarabhanya so maybe styles but all of them should be allowed they should not uh, be like the gita like dhammopasanhita gita so in the kudakapata takata again in the same passage gita pasanhita dhamma is allowed so gita pasanhito pana dhammo vattati dhamma connected with a song gita pasanhita dhamma this is what is this it is there are no examples given maybe it's difficult no in a text i think but Generally, it is accepted that it means Dhamma recited in a melodious manner, but respecting the matas, for example, not stretching vowels too much, and without instruments or things that would distort words, maybe choirs, distorting words and meanings and so on. And it should not lead to those five disadvantages. We start having too much uh, like craving or attachment to the sound and thinking too much about the sound, not the meaning. So then it's then it's approaching Dhammopasang Hita Gita. So here we have to try to uh, avoid those disadvantages and stay within something that is melodious, that is agreeable. To, to listen to, it doesn't have to be ugly, unpleasant, but something agreeable that is clear, that is pleasant, it can be. Even there were monks who were proficient in reciting the Dhamma in a very pleasing manner, but it should not lead to those disadvantages and should not be done as like a song. And the meaning, most importantly, should not be distorted so some related words are ayataka ayataka here it means like drawn out stretched out long but it could also mean sudden or quick i think it's not the meaning applied here for example you recite it too quickly i don't know if this is mentioned it was not discussed here the meaning is stretched out long the root yat is to stretch yet could also mean to arrange or hand over sarakuti is the making of melodies sara like voice or melody kuti so the making of melodies nikaya maya is the verb used to to relate to the attachment the person who is attached or craving for sarakuti which disturbs his samadhi. So these are rules preaching re with regard to preaching the Dhamma. Now ear cleaning. Anujana mi bikave kannamalaharanim. Sorry, kannamalaharanim. So the Buddha allows uh, an earwax remover, an instrument to remove the wax, earwax. So what type of kannamalaharani is allowed? So luxurious ones are not allowed. Uchavacha. These are not allowed. So they should be done with the allowable materials. So there are 10 allowable materials. Uh, our modern cotton buds, for example, are usually considered allowed, equivalent. So 10 allowable materials. Anujanami bhikkave attimayam dantamayam Visanamayam, Nalamayam, Belumayam, Kattamayam, Jatumayam, Palamayam, Lohamayam, and Sankanabhimayam. So, dantam, uh, first is Ati, is a bone. Dantamayam is something made of ivory. Visana is horn. Nala is reeds. Velu, bamboo. Katta is wood. Jatu is resin or lack. Lack. Pala is fruit, loha is metal, and sankanabhi is conch shells. shells. 
So these are 10 allowable materials appear many times in the veneer. So here, the meaning of these words, I won't repeat, it's the same. So Kanna Malaharani is the weird earwax remover. The other ones we have discussed. Just this word Nabi. Sankha is a conch shell. You could say just Sankha. But Nabi, it seems to be, I don't know if it's related over here. Sankha Nabi is just a conch shell. But Nabi by itself seems to be the center point of a wheel, like the hub of a cart. Or it also means the navel, the belly button. Nabi. Okay, this was ear cleaning. Now, teeth cleaning. Prohibitions and allowances about tooth wood. Dantakatta. So, the prohibitions. Nabhikave dighang dantakattam kaditabbang. So, we should not kadita, you should not chew very long tooth wood. Dantakatta. Very long one is not allowed. And then under this or following this, Nachate na sa manero akote tabo. Yo akote apatidukatasa. So you should not beat the samaneras, the novices, with this tooth wood, this long tooth wood. Should not be too long. You, you can use it for beating. So you should not beat. Yo akote apatidukatasa. Another prohibition is Nabikave. So, a too short of a tooth wood is also not allowed. The word here for short is atimatahaka. Is used for tooth wood. So, both of these. Neither too long nor too short. Now, allowances is anujanami bikave atangula paramang. Maximum eight finger breadth. Or chaturangula pachiman, minimum four finger breadths, dantakatan. So uh, the tooth wood should be a maximum of eight finger breadths and a minimum of four. So this is allowed. Now, five benefits of chewing tooth wood. Pangchime bikave anisansa dantakatasakadani. Kusan, it is pleasing to the eyes. Chakusan. Mukang naduggandhang hoti, the mouth does not smell bad. Rasaharani yovisudjanti, the taste buds are cleaned. Rasaharani. Pitang simhang bhattang napariyo nandati, the bile and phlegm do not cover the food. Bhattamasa chadeti, the food is agreeable to one. So these are the panchanisansa of the dantakattas, dantakattasakadani. Vocabulary related to this is harani is a carrier or conductor, bearer, or something that remote taking or removing as well. Harani, it comes from, uh, I think in this section is in the harani, harani. I think it's over here. Kanna mala harani. Yeah, it's in the ear cleaning section. Harani, no, is the remover. So, atimatahaka is too short for tooth wood. Dantakata is the tooth stick. Kata by itself is like, could be wood, timber, log, plank. Rasaharaniya is the taste buds. Literally, it means flavor carriers. Rasa haraniya. Ah, here is why harani. See, harani, haraniya. Chadeti is to please, give pleasure. Um, this is the second meaning of the word. I think it also means to cover. But here it means to please, to give pleasure or to be agreeable. So these were related to teeth cleaning. Now the last section about nails, prohibitions and allowances. Prohibitions. Nabhikave dighana kadhare tabba. So a long nail should not be worn, should not be, uh, nails should not be long. You should not bear, should not uh, carry. 
long nails. So what is long a nail is not specified, but it is agreed, commonly agreed, the, that it should not be longer than the tips of the finger. Tips of the finger. Then um, another prohibition is visatimatan nabikavi visatimatan karapetabang. So you should not polish or smoothen the nails, not only of the hand but also of the feet. Visatimatan. Now allowances. Anujana mi bikavi nakacheda A nail clipper is allowed. So the monks had nothing to cut their nails with. They were scratching it here and there. They were biting at them. So the Buddha allowed a nail clipper. Then could be a bit like, like a knife. Nakachedana sataka. Could be a little bit like a knife. There is some discussion here, I think, about the skin of the nails. I think we call them cuticles. I'm not sure. And um, but it was not translated, so I'm not very clear. I'm not very sure about it. It seems like you could remove them. No, I'm not sure. So the nail clippers are allowed. Another uh, allowance is mansapamanina nakang chinditung. So the Buddha allowed the nails to be cut even with the flesh. So right there, uh, even with the flesh of the finger so quite short but without hurting yourself this comes from the from the situation where the monks were i think bleeding they were cutting the nails maybe too short and it was bleeding so the buddha gave this allowance malamatan apakaditum so it is allowed to remove the mala the dust the dirt so whatever you do to remove the dirt or dust is allowed but you should not polish the nails. So mata means smooth, clean, polished, burnished. So mata with a double T dot. Apakaditum means to remove away. Apakaditum, take away. So these are the related rules. Uh, with regard to nails. And here ends the content of the second year, second semester. It is the first test of the Kandaka Vinya test. Kandaka Vinya content.